There we go. Okay, so you can see that that was pretty slow. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bother looking. But he, one of the the things you can see about the the noise here is it has these sort of rings, and it's a kind of a assigned noise function that we use that kind of provides these uh, kind of foamy uh, ring-like uh, looks. And the again, the more frequency you get frequencies you get, the more it's like a nice detailed uh, fractal noise. Let's go back to 100 on the resolution and uh, on the the shader. Now there's a threshold uh, which is uh, sort of a, a it's not just the total wave height but it's the height of the individual sub waves so um, uh, it's the, the threshold is is it kind of like a curvature threshold at which it will a curvature and height threshold at which it'll produce the uh, the foam and uh, it's not dynamic foam so this this foam here is uh, uh, just simply a textural foam, but it kind of lasts into the trough of the wave. So what we do for the foam is evaluate the ocean at um, uh, with a little bit of a lag in time uh, based on the wave frequency. So um, the foam is is actually when a wave is trough is going down, it, it still thinks it's it's all the way up. So it tends to foam when the wave peaks, and then as as the trough falls, then it starts to fade. Uh, so that's the general model. Uh, you can't kind of have the foam linger a long time as a wave's gone past. It only lingers uh, one, you know, half of a of a wavelength as the as the wave moves. Um, so it's a it's a nice trick, uh, but it's there there. If you need dynamic foam, uh, there are other ways of uh, doing that by uh, hooking in a, a a fluid node and using that to uh, texture the foam values. Um, there's also a general foam offset. This is uh, usually what you would texture. It just adds on to the total foam value. Um, and the threshold, as you can see, it's sort of the, uh, the, the height threshold at which it emits foam. So if you want, let's say you want a really defined thick foam with a sharp edge, then you would create a lot of foam. Uh, like you could even like type in values like three or something, and then just lower the threshold, and then you'll get a very tight cutoff. Conversely, if you want it very loosely defined, you can make the foam emission uh, a low value and then raise the threshold quite high, and uh, you know you can you can get the the foam just kind of gently formed over the entire ocean surface. Okay, now one of the things I'd mentioned was that uh, you can have an ocean created that tracks the view. Now you see now as I move the actual ocean surface, right, with all the triangles on it. As we get out here, we're going to lose our horizon now. And what we generally want the horizon to always kind of be off at infinity, basically. Um, and also, we won't have very good resolution on the triangles as we do this. So as you move over the ocean, we'll get poorer and poorer and elongated triangles and stuff out here. It won't look good as we, <laughs> as we move over the surface. So there's a little trick you can use. Um, let's just create a new scene and we'll create a completely new ocean. So uh, uh, now when we create ocean, I'll turn on attach to camera. Now it might look a little weird. There's our preview plane. And as I now zoom in and out, you notice how the preview plane seems to stay the same. And I'll track up and I'll track down. Uh, what's actually happening, we can see if we, um, let me just, bring up uh, a layout of, uh, say, uh, four panes. Now, as I in my perspective view here, as I move out, you can see that here, we'll just zoom out here. There's our ocean plane. So as I go in and zoom in, you see the actual ocean plane here is getting smaller and smaller. Likewise, if I go up, the ocean plane gets larger. And as I go down towards the ocean surface, it gets smaller. So what it's trying to do, and also if I track, so as I move sideways, see the ocean tracks with me. So what it's doing is it's always keeping the triangles so that most of the triangles are right in front of the view or near the view. And, and so the horizon always stays there. And you can animate a camera moving over the ocean surface. And uh, it will... Um, the camera can fly forever over the ocean, and you'll always have lots of triangles. You could even fly in amongst the waves, and there'll always be enough triangles to represent uh, the, the peaking of the ocean as you move through it. 
So uh, and this sort of relies on the way the bump works with the ocean because the, the bump is applied to the waves. So uh, the, the actual triangles will sort of move over the ocean as you move the camera. Uh, but because the ocean's moving, you tend not to see this. And also because the shading itself is not affected by that. The it's just the uh, profile of the triangles is affected. You, you probably won't notice it unless uh, you don't have a high enough tessellation, in which case you can just sort of increase the tessellation on the surface. So that kind of, th that way you can go way up in the air, you can see the ocean, you know, through the clouds and you can come right in amongst the waves and still have enough triangles. So what I'm going to show in this file is a simple example of uh, bump mapping. Uh, and uh, if you look in to the hypergraph or hypershade, you'll see that this is a familiar uh, node network that you use for bump uh, creating displacement shader or uh, displacing the surface. But what you should notice over here is that uh, you don't see any actual displacement of the surface. So the sur displacement actually happens inside the render view. And it is evident if you see uh, render editor's render view. And this is a rendering of the same view. Uh, but as you can see that there's a this ring that is actually cutting into this geometry of uh, cylinder, which you don't see over here. It's not actually happening in 3D space. It, ha it, it happens only when you render it out. And how that happens is, uh, Let's take a look at the hypershade. You can see that um, this uh, bump map is applied to blin1. So if I look into the attribute editor, it's uh, applied over here. And this is the bump or the ramp that is actually creating the displacement. Uh, you look at that, it's a simple circular ramp. Uh, what happens is kind of similar in the case of uh, ocean shader. So this is this is exactly what happens in in the ocean shader when you render it out uh, as a software render. Uh, the only difference being that when before even before you render it out, you're going to see the displacement via the height field, which is what we are going to see the next. So the next file that you see is uh, you'll find the same exact same uh, uh, shader network. It's the blin one that has got the uh, bump mapping. It's a circular ramp, exactly the same as it was before. But the difference over here, when you look at it, is that this uh, displacement is being represented in 3D space in my perspective camera. So that actually tells me how it's going to look when when I actually render it out. And this is all being done by a height field node. Um, although it's called height field, when you create it, it's being uh, grouped under transform one. So this is actually the height field node that does the <coughs> representation. And in the attribute editor, you can see the familiar attributes of resolution which uh, is, if I increase that, you can see that it's a more accurate representation as you increase the number. Uh, color is really not of much of a significance. Uh, we just set the color as blue um, to represent the ocean. And then on top of that, you sort of uh, apply the, the foam that goes into it. Uh, displacement is actually being driven by the bump map and here's the height scale so if I increase or decrease it I can uh, accentuate the actual bump that is being rendered so if I render this out uh, it's going to be look exactly the same kind of what I showed before so let's take a look at how the height field actually gets this input and if I go into the hypergraph, you'll see that the bump or the ramp that was uh, 
being fed into the uh, displacement has got its uh, out alpha being fed into the displacement attribute of the height field and this is how the height field knows where to actually show the displacement and that's pretty much the same uh, way how we use it for uh, ocean <coughs>